Welcome back. This is Mr. McCall, and this is World History. First things first, the goal today, explain how the development of agricultural techniques such as irrigation systems led to the emergence of Sumerian city-states. All right, so when we talk agricultural, we're talking about farming, so growing crops and raising animals. And when we talk city-states, obviously, we're talking about independent cities that have their own religion, laws, government, completely independent of the other cities surrounding them, okay? So what we're going to talk about specifically, most important, is the irrigation system. I'm also going to discuss levees and the plow, because these are some developments that come out of ancient sewer that are, are very important. All right, so let's take a look at this irrigation system. What we have right here is that trench I've been talking about. So over here, in the distance, we see a river. And they're going to use this river to actually supply crops in the surrounding area. So what they have is this river, and they dig this trench. And the water comes from the river and goes down this trench. So how... how did the development of agricultural techniques lead to the emergence of Sumerian city-states? Well, this is an irrigation system. Works great unless the person upstream is not taking care of their business. All right, so let's say this person lives right here. And they're not taking care of their stuff. All right, so what's happening is there's a little bit of silt buildup in the stream right here. What happens is that stops the irrigation system. So the person that lives down here, all of a sudden they're not getting the water that they need. For their stream. So they are steamed. Uh, they are not getting what they need from this irrigation system because this person dropped the ball and has clogged up the irrigation system. All right, so how does this lead to the emergence of city-states? Well, city-states were created to govern these canals, these trenches. So if this person failed to keep theirs clean, there would be a government official that would be coming to talk to this person. And they would be uh, assigning a consequence, maybe uh, sending this person to jail, whatever the consequence may be. They were in charge of governing to make sure this irrigation system worked. And everybody agreed that this was how it had to go because if this person weren't here, then all of a sudden this person's angry, this person's not doing their job, these two people would have a conflict. And if this happened everywhere, there'd be a lot of conflict along the irrigation system. So in order to prevent conflicts between people, fights between people that lived next to each other and uh, depended on the same irrigation system, they trusted somebody to run the irrigation system. That's the government. That's the first city-state. So they're in charge of making sure that this trench stays clean and working. That's essentially it. That's what leads to the beginning of city-states. All these people working together to make sure this trench stays clean and continues to work. It takes a lot of work. So you don't have people that are just living by themselves. You have people that have to gather together so they can complete this work. In Neolithic settlements, we saw pretty small farming communities. Look like 10 to 15 people working on a farm. Well, this requires a lot more work. The irrigation system, the trenches take a lot of work to dig, and when we come down here and look at levees, these take a lot of work because you've got to build up all this dirt and build a wall. So here we have the Euphrates. They build a town up on top of it. That's the city-state. And then this is the levee, and then uh, you're gonna have the fertile soil from the, the river, the sediment, the silt. Uh, that's basically what a, a levee looks like. They 
have this wall that protects them from the floods of the river. And that takes a lot of work. And anything that takes a lot of work is going to require cooperation, teamwork. Another innovation or development in farming that I wanted to discuss was the plow. The plow is this. Now, initially, they had just a person dragging the plow across the field. And that's a lot of work. So what they did is they domesticated some cows, and they had the cows pull the plow much easier. Now why would they plow a field? Well this has already been plowed. The reason you plow a field is because that turns the soil. I would kind of describe it as uh, Kool-Aid. If you don't stir up the Kool-Aid all the the flavoring is at the bottom. So all the flavoring in the dirt was at the bottom. They needed to turn the soil so that they could bring some of the nutrients up to the top so the plants that they planted could have the nutrients. So going with our Kool-Aid reference, this is stirring the Kool-Aid and this is adding the water. So by the time they put this together they've got some pretty good Kool-Aid. I hope this has been edifying. Uh, the goal today was explain how the development of agricultural techniques such as irrigation systems led to the emergence of Sumerian city-states. This has been Mr. McCall, World History. Take care.